Well, it's taken 70 years and eight generations, but the Chevrolet Corvette is finally in Australia, straight from the factory, right-hand drive. Has it been worth the wait? Damn right it has. Let me tell you why. Generation 8 Corvette, or C8 as it's classified, is the first to go mid-engined, just like a Ferrari. Before this, the Corvette was always front-engined and rear-drive. The engineers at Chev simply judged the change necessary to keep upgrading the VET's performance. To give this car its full name, it's the Chevrolet C8 Corvette Stingray Coupe 3LT with Z51 performance package. Sorry if I left something out there. Anyway, in Australia, it's $160,500 plus on-road costs. Yep, that's a lot of money, but it's only a fraction of a Ferrari, Lambo, or a McLaren will set you back, and it delivers mid-engine supercar looks and performance. Around its nose, the new Corvette hints at its predecessors, while the cab Ford cockpit is meant to remind us of a jet fighter. Check out the removable roof piece. It's a Corvette Coupe signature. At the back there are quad exhaust tips and everywhere you look, air inlets and vents. But check this out for a styling statement. Under this laminated glass canopy is the heart of the beast. This new 6.2 litre LT2 V8 pushrod engine. It's a new member of the legendary Chevy small block family. And in this naturally aspirated guise, no turbos, no superchargers, it still pumps out big power and torque. And it sucks a bit of fuel too. Corvette has almost always come with a manual gearbox option, but not this time. Instead, the only connection from the engine to the rear wheels is an eight-speed Tremec dual clutch transaxle with manual changing by these deliciously long, flappy paddles. Get in this car and the message is clear. It's all about the driver. Just check out the way everything wraps around whoever's got their hands on this squared off, squirkle steering wheel. Because this is the high spec 3LT, you get this leather wrapping spread around the cockpit, suede microfiber trim and these very supportive sports seats. They're eight-way powered, which helps along with the power adjustable steering to find a comfy driving position. And if you're particularly tall, don't worry, you'll still be able to fit in this car. It has generous headroom. Considering the cabin of the Corvette is pretty cramped, they've done a great job with storage. You can slot your phone into this wireless charger here, the glove box, decent size, double cup holder, lidded bin here, there are also door pockets, but they're pretty minuscule and hard to get at underneath the door armrests. We couldn't be in a modern car without a touch screen, and in the Corvette, it sits up to the left of the instrument panel. It's easy to navigate and familiar to the eye if you've ever been in another Chevy like the Silverado pickup. But this rickety volume knob feels like it comes from some bargain basement econo box. And check out the weird way all the aircon controls are placed up here. It's awkward, distracting, and difficult to see what you want. The Corvette comes with most of the modern infotainment features you would expect, including a multi-mode head-up display. The digital instrument panel is tunable through four faces. Appropriately though, the tachometer is a centerpiece in all of them. In track mode, it turns from a dial into a bar graph and shares the limelight with gear selection. Thanks to cameras, sensors and sonars, the Corvette is manageable to reverse and move around in tight spaces. The nose lifting function helps negotiate speed humps and gutters. But it's very hard to see what's diagonally behind you to the left side, which makes merging a challenge. Safety is where the C8 Corvette story turns sour. There's no autonomous emergency braking or active cruise control. For this money, that's just not good enough. For a mid-engine car, the Corvette has quite decent storage opportunities. You can fit a golf bag in the boot or the roof when you remove it. Up front, there's a front trunk or front for a couple of soft bags. But don't kid yourself, 
don't head down the supermarket and try and stock all the family shopping in here. It just won't fit. But you will create lots of attention because you'll have the best looking car in the car park. And now for the good bit, the driving. But just how good will it be? Get in the Corvette and you're immediately conscious of that big engine rumbling away behind your left ear. That's new. And also these GT2 seats that come with the 3LT spec holding you really tightly. Which is a good thing because that rumbling engine goes from friendly to ferocious in seconds. About three seconds, naught to 100 kilometers an hour that is. But this is not a difficult car to drive the way Chevrolet's engineers intended it. The engine has a deep well of pulling power and delivers it across a flexible, broad range. So you don't have to be madly cycling up and down through the gearbox as you go along. The Corvette is based around an aluminium frame and composite panels. It weighs in at a relatively light 1,527 kilos. It has a 40-60 weight balance, which Chev insists is the right one, and rolls on staggered 19 and 20 inch Michelin Pilot Sport rubber that come with the Z51 pack. And it hugs the road. It sits flat, turns accurately, has prodigious grip, and pulls up sharp thanks to its Brembo brakes. It makes any corner fun, from a roundabout to your favourite stretch of remote mountain road. It's all adjustable as well thanks to multiple driving modes that play with the tune of the Z51 Pack's magnetic dampers, steering, engine tune, exhaust note and even brake feel. At its most supple the suspension can even cope with quite rough roads, but dial it up and it gets pretty harsh. The Corvette can also get pretty noisy in the cabin, there's plenty of tyre roar off course chip roads and you hear plenty of engine noise too but then who's complaining about that? Take the roof off and the wind buffeting can get pretty extreme at speed around the B-pillar. Yeah, roofless driving's more about show than go. What a driving experience the Corvette is. It's tremendously fast and capable but by no means intimidating. You could drive it comfortably in its most relaxed tour mode day to day. The C8 Corvette comes protected in Australia by a three year 100,000 kilometre warranty, which in this day and age is pretty basic. Service intervals are every 12 months or 12,000 kilometres, which is pretty impressive for a car like this. There is no cap price servicing plan at the moment. And that folks is the Corvette, an automotive legend that's taken way too long to get to Australia. The sad thing now is the limited build numbers mean that the first batch of 228 examples are already accounted for and the order books haven't yet been opened for another lot. So get your deposits ready folks because the Corvette delivers a high performance mid-engine supercar driving experience at a fraction of the cost of the Italian thoroughbreds. Hey, it's not cheap, but it is incredible value. In fact, it's just plain incredible.